Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tussman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. and I'm here to bring you today's online paper crafting class. We are going to do the same type of card but in three different ways. So I'm just going to go kind of back to some basic stamping techniques but show you how versatile a stamp set can be. Um, so sorry for the couple minute delay there. I, I saw a question that said, is she gonna be late? And I'm like, no, I'm just still trying to gather so many supplies. This, These cards are all using sort of like different supplies. So I have been like scrambling all over my craft room. Normally it does not take me that long. Good morning, everybody. It's so fun to see your comments rolling in. Good to see you, good to see um, um, all the familiar names and some new names. I'm seeing some new names there too, so thank you and welcome. Welcome if this is your first time. Uh, I invite you to subscribe, to like, thumbs up everybody. That would be great, that always helps me out. Let me introduce you to two important people that help, help me during my lives. We have Trisha Josephs on YouTube and we have Lisa Marshall on Facebook. They are my moderators. They're there to answer questions during the live, guide you to where information is, that sort of thing. Um, if you're not familiar with my lives, I am, again, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. My blog name is stampyourartout.com. So that's where I kind of like keep all of my resources and ideas and stuff. So that's kind of like my home base. If you're ever needing to find like the replay of a video, that sort of thing, you can go there. I mean, like there's a whole collection of stuff there. You can also go to YouTube or Facebook, but um, everything is based in that website. So thank you, thank you. Second live for you, Gail. Yay, thanks for coming back. <laughs> All right, so um, what am I gonna use? I'm gonna use Dainty Delights. Dainty Delights is a stamp set, and then there's also a coordinating set of dies called Dainty Delights. And we'll be um, using the dies just on one card. Mainly the focus is on stamps and techniques. Um, there's no fun fold today. I know it's weird, right? Rachel loves her fun folds and her papers, but we are gonna just dive into stamping. I'm gonna demonstrate some masking, um, simple masking, and the reason why I came up with this card actually is because I was sharing some show and tell cards from the past few months. And I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't done this in a while. So you'll, if you watched that video where I showed a bunch of cards that I've been receiving, um, that was aired on Facebook, my Facebook page. Let's see if I can find, uh, is that it? Visit me on Facebook, Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel. Um, there it is. So if you watched that live um, then, or the recording of it, you might know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a very, really fun technique to do with, especially like flower or scenic stamps. So we're gonna do masking. I'm gonna demonstrate um, some ways of coloring in these images and um, a little trick for ribbon. So some basic stuff again, but if you are a stamper that has stamped a long time, you might get inspired by something else that I'm sharing or just a different twist on something that you already own, or maybe I'll make you fall in love with these products. And you can always shop the products. I share mostly Stampin' Up! products. Sometimes I'll throw in something like water or a container or a um, paper towels or <laughs> post-it notes or whatever, some basic stuff that we don't sell, but you'll be able to access it and you can always shop for products from my blog. Uh, so fun. Hello, everybody. I love your comments rolling in. Thanks for um, commenting because you do get entered into a prize drawing um, if you comment. Um, not to bribe you to comment, but it's always fun to have a chance at a prize. Um, what else do I want to mention before we get moving? I think that's it. So, Let's share the supplies. I'm gonna click over to my computer here and bring up that, um, that piece of paper that you can print off later on when you're on my blog post that will go live that's connected to photos of this card, um, uh, embedded video, all of that stuff, measurements, supplies, visual supply list is there, everything. It will be in my blog post at 1215, which is about an hour and 10 minutes from now. And already, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see the link to that blog post. It just won't go live until 12.15. And when you're in there, you can print off this sheet. This is a PDF that will be printable for you. You can see photos of the cards. You can see the date, the name of the project that we'll be demonstrating today, the title or whatever. 
the measurements and the supplies are listed there. It was a long, long list, so I had to make my photos tinier. Um, and you don't have to own all of that in order to make um, one of these cards. Some of it, uh, you know, one of the cards might use just a few of the supplies, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna show you the basic one first, and that's shown at the top. Um, what else do I wanna point out on here? I just, oh, on the sheet, I just have um, base card stock, smaller layer, bigger layer, um, ribbon. So um, I didn't identify the colors because each card is different. So my voice is coming back, Sue. Um, there's still a little cracking in it. I can't hit high notes yet. I used to sing soprano, uh, believe it or not, because I have an alto voice, but it's, it's coming back. I'm feeling better. Um, everything, yes, rainbows. What is this? I'm watching while making rainbow jelly. Oh, <laughs> jello. Oh, Pam, I thought you said it's all rainbows. Yes. Today is all about rainbows. All right, so we're gonna go to, because um, we're gonna use lots of colors. Let's go to my desktop. I'm gonna push this off my computer. You guys don't see what I'm doing, but I just wanna make sure I can see what I'm doing here. And we're gonna move to the first card. So let's pull in some basic stamping techniques. Um, this first one is basically just cutting your card base. A lot of you know this, but if you are a beginning crafter, you can always join in on my videos. We're gonna use the trimmer and this trimmer has measurements on this side going to four and a quarter. So we're gonna position our cardstock, which is eight and a half by 11, at the four and a quarter mark, and we're gonna cut. That's gonna give us two card bases if we want. We obviously wanna make one card base for sure. So we're gonna score halfway in this direction with the scoring blade, and that's at the five and a half inch mark. Now we have our card base, and this card base fits into our medium size envelopes. We have medium size envelopes in clear, uh, basic white, and very vanilla. And I still, every once in a while, need to take sips of water because the voice is still struggling a little bit, but that's okay. Um, all right, so there's our base card stock. Now for our layers, and I think I've already cut them, at least I cut them for this card. For our layers, we're gonna use that same base card stock color and we're gonna cut it a half of an inch smaller. So we're going to four inches instead of, I'm sorry, three and three quarters instead of four and a quarter. And we're gonna to go to five inches instead of five and a half inches, okay? So that's these two layers. And then for our second layer, which is our smaller of the two layers, we're gonna cut a little bit further over, which will bring us to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And these layers, this is what I was like rushing to get ready before the live. Um, so, so, so sorry that I did not have these ready. So there's those two layers. And you can see here that if we put them on top of each other, there's an eighth of an inch difference. And then when we center this piece, it's a 16th of an inch difference all the way around. And then the last layer on this card is going to be cut from very vanilla, which means I have to go get more vanilla. We're gonna do a four inch layer by five and a quarter. And we need two of those. For this first card, we also need a bonus piece. That was that optional piece that I had mentioned. And that piece, let's just set those over here. That piece is just a scrap of the, the base piece. So we'll need this one. Let us move this aside for now and bring in our stamps. So the stamp set that we're gonna use today, again, Dainty Delights. And for the first card, we are gonna pair it with the dies. You can see lots of beautiful floral images in there. Um, thanks, Judy. Um, lots of beautiful floral images that are um, fine line kind of uh, detail stamps, right? Things that you can color in or whatever. And then you've got some sentiments that are sort of all occasions, celebrate you, thank you, sending love, um, you know, sort of like encompassing a lot of different um, reasons to send a card. So it is clear mount and um, we've already got our stamp mounted. The inside of the card also uses one of the images. So we've got that image and then we've also got this one here, but I'm not gonna use the sentiments from that stamp set. Instead, I'm gonna bring in a sentiment from The Biggest Wish. 
And I sort of wanted to use a different one, but I ended up using this Hello, which looks really close to another Hello. So if you wanted to, you know, opt for either set, you could. All right, so, but I didn't list that one in the supplies. We're not using that one today. We're using Biggest Wish, which is one of my favorite stamp sets. I love this one. So we want to grab the Hello out of there. And we're going to mount that onto a block too. I guess I forgot my block and another piece of vanilla. Here are the dies that you can use with this stamp set. We'll be using this one and that coordinates with, and you can see if I lay it over the top, that coordinates with this stamp image. So like all the outline images, you have a die for, and then you also have, um, I believe, and then you also have these detail ones like a flower and a bunch of flowers and oh gosh, I don't know, centers of flowers and leaves, um, more flowers, more flowers. <laughs> so um, here's a little stem. So lots of fun stuff. So this is the die that we'll be using. By the way, if you like some of these extra things that I share, like the folders and the magnetic sheets, you can find them under my shop tab on my blog. So you go to my blog at stampyourartout.com and you can click on my favorite extras and you'll be able to find how to get your hands on these things. Those were from Stampin' Storage. Okay, so let's start with this piece here. We're gonna stamp on here with our tuxedo, oops, tuxedo memento black. Now to get a real dark image, it's good to have a stamp positioner. Stampin' Up! no longer sells a stamp positioner. Hang on. I just remembered I have to grab my vanilla and my clear block. Stampin' Up! no longer sells a stamp positioner, and we're sad about that, but there are lots of reasons behind it. But we're going to um, go ahead and just do this first card without a stamp positioner, and then I'm going to bring back the beloved Stamparatus, which is no longer available, but you, there are many stamp positioners on the market um, still, so you can do like a research. Um, stamp a jig that's a good one too. Um, I do have that. So, But we'll use, we'll use the one that we have on hand. I haven't invested in another one yet. Now, because this is a large stamp, sometimes it's better to make sure you have even pressure on a large stamp by turning the stamp over and then putting your ink on top of it like this, which is what I decided to do partway through inking it up. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and stamp directly onto our scrap piece. We're gonna put some even pressure on there. I have listed in the supplies lots of things, including both machines. So see, it's just not as dark, you guys. We're gonna use the stamp positioner. Let's bring that in now, because I want a darker. I want a darker one. All right, so we're gonna take and lift this up. Um, again, this is a tool that's no longer available, but you can find stamp positioners out there if you want. And we're gonna let's clean this off first. Do 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 do. Where's my? Here it is. It's on my chair. So we're going to clean this off with the mist and the scrub because that's my cleaner of choice. You could also use the chamois. You could use baby wipes. You could use a damp washcloth. Um, so yeah, there we go. Wash and dry. Let's peel this off. And we're going to move it over to this piece here. And we'll just set it up. We'll make sure that there's some room for our card layers. We're gonna press it down and grab it. And now we'll set our scrap under here just so that we can make sure we pick it up. Um, I think I have another scrap, just so you can compare. Let's compare, okay? So we're gonna take and position that. We're gonna grab our magnets that I have tucked underneath here just to secure it in place. All right, let's see. Yep, we're good. All right, so let's ink up that stamp again. <laughs> oh my gosh how is the weather in your area you guys I'm seeing some people sharing that already California is cloudy all right we're gonna press down I think we are hazy here too but we've also got some air quality issues there's some fires going on I guess so here you can see 
a comparison because we've only stamped it once. It's still the same darkness. I am getting deeper color on the ends here, so I'm gonna focus on getting ink through the middle. That is the great thing about a positioner, right? And I got ink on my fingers again. So we're gonna ink through the middle. And this time we're gonna press down right through the middle. Make sure we get that. Oh, see, so much deeper, right? I love this one. So we're gonna go with that. We'll set that aside. We'll bring in our dies and we'll do some die cutting. Here's our machine. And I might have to zoom out. Oh, it looks like I'm good. Okay, so let's set this up. Platform one, die adapter number two, cutting plate number three, paper, and a sticky note. Yay for sticky notes. Sticky notes are so helpful to us crafters. We love them. Thank you to 3M and other companies that make them. All right, so we'll set that on there. Make sure that it's stuck down. And then we'll just put another cutting plate on top, sandwich all together. We're gonna crank it through. I'm turning the handle here. You can see a handle off to the side. And that's taking the balls of the machine, the, the rollers, I should say, and it's squishing it so that it puts pressure onto everything. <laughs> onto everything, there's lots of pressure. Take off that post-it note, separate the two, and now we've got our die cut flower. All right, and I probably could have done that better because I was at the angle there, but that's okay, that's okay, you guys. You guys are gonna see the finished one and you'll see how, um, how, how beautiful the finished one is compared. <laughs> Yeah, when I do multiple cards, sometimes I go faster. All right, we've got our card base. For our inside layers, we need three. For our outside layers, we need three. Normally, we go, we go with a light, the lightest color for the top, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use that as an accent color, and we're going to use our crumb cake as our main color, which is why we have that, because it's going to blend into the background. Before we do that, we're going to add a sun. And the sun, gorgeous, you guys. You're gonna love this. So, in fact, maybe I should demonstrate it on the next card. I will. I'm gonna demonstrate it on the next card because this one here is very basic. Let's just do this. Let's take, because I wanna show you that one a little bit more in detail, and I don't wanna repeat the sun thing um, because that'll take up a lot of time. We only need to learn that once, I think. So let's layer these up. And I'm gonna demonstrate on this one, just taking and adding um, our, let's see here. I think I'll add the little, um, yeah, I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so we're gonna add this to the front with dimensionals and pretend like our sun is already there. I'll just be able to take this off later and add it. Okay, so we're gonna take and add this using mini dimensionals in a couple spots because you can see that there's some places where it's a little bit smaller right and we have regular dimensionals in there it's good to get both especially for an image like this we're going to peel these backings off and everybody's like wait a minute do your sun now you would do your sun now yes but we're going to do the sun in just a second on another card so this is gonna get tacked down after our sun is on, okay? And again, wait for that, that's coming on the next card. It's gonna look better on the next card anyways, because the color is so much brighter. All right, next, after we've got our sun, pretend it's there, and this piece on, we're gonna go ahead and add our ribbon across here. And our ribbon is gonna come from the gold and vanilla, beautiful stuff, right? And let me make sure I give you the exact name of this. This is the gold and vanilla satin edged um, ribbon. And look at, see that it's vanilla mostly, and then there's just this little hint of this little bunch of um, gold threads on either side. So you get that metallic through there. So we're gonna bring this around, and I've got about 13 inches of ribbon here that I'm gonna use. 
using my scissors that has the ribbon on it, snip, tie. If you need to, you can tie a knot here or use a person's um, help. They can just put their finger there. Don't worry about gluing it down yet because you want to be able to adjust it to where you want it to go. Then do your other little tie so that you got an overhand knot. You can adjust it. Do you see how I did that? I kind of curved my cardstock and I was able to move this to where I wanted it to sit. So that's now sitting where I want it. We're going to trim it up, trim the ends. Okay, and now I sort of know where my hello can be. So we're going to grab our hello stamp and our black ink ink that up because it's clear you can see right through it it's pretty awesome just make sure you press that ribbon down in case you have ink on top of your clear block if you are one that presses really hard into an ink pad um, then you might not want to have your ribbon on yet because <laughs> your ribbon kind of um, sits up a little higher but it also kind of tells you where you're going to be able to stamp that hello so we want it right above like that Again, the sun is on there, the hello, everything's stamped on there. Now I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit of speckling. So this is a fun technique, and I won't show this to you on my um, second and third cards, but I wanna show it to you on this one. This is a fun technique that you can do with your Wink of Stella, and just something hard like a pen or um, your take your pick tool or something. And I'm just peeking to make sure I did this right, yes. So we're gonna take and pull the cap off. <laughs> Rachel's becoming a messy stamper, you guys. Holy cow. I felt it hit my hand too. Well, actually now it looks like, it looks like glitter on my hands, it's pretty. Okay, so you can test it on to scrap paper or just your grid paper, but you're gonna tap. You're gonna tap, tap, uh, take your Wink of Stella and you're gonna tap it against your hard object. And if you tap it, you should get little speckles. Now, I'm sure here, if I do that on a scrap paper, I'll be able to hold it up to you so you can see it better. Are we getting it on there? Sometimes it goes further away or, yeah. So let's make sure we... Oh, it is on there. It's very light and faint. Can you see those little speckles on there? Maybe, maybe, maybe we can, Rachel. Let's do this too. You can sometimes give it a little squeeze. I don't want to squeeze too much because then I get globules of it. But we squeezed it. Do we have bigger speckles? It's so pretty. Oh yeah, now you can see it right down there at the bottom. It's such a pretty effect in person. Um, harder to see on camera, but you got the idea. When you take Wink of Stella and you color with it, you get kind of a shimmer paint look. So what you want to do now is once you have all this on here, and it's okay if it gets on the ribbon, but you do it all over your sun and your layers, like you want it everywhere. Now, if you wanted to avoid the um, pumpkin pie layer and the um, vanilla layer underneath, or the ribbon too, you could certainly do that. So now we have little speckles. Can you see them? Little speckles here and there. There's some on the flowers. This is a really hard technique to show, show in person. Let me try to see if I can get a bigger glob. I'm just squeezing the side of the pen here. Okay, now we're gonna cap it, put that away. Check it out. We have a couple, a couple on there that are bigger. And it just adds a little bit of glitz and glimmer to it. There's one there. It's not really glowing for you. And then there's tiny ones all over. So when you're done with that card, you're going to get, oh, and let me tell you about the inside too. So the inside layers stack up the same way. And then you stamp a different stamp. So those are going to get put inside like this. And we're going to stamp this image a few times. Let's do that really quickly so you can see where those images go. So for my top image, 
I used down here, this one. So I inked up my stamp just in that little spot down there and I angled it into the card like that. Oh, without the stem. Let's flip it over. There's always two sides. <laughs> let's try it again. Angle it, Rachel. All right, let's try it again. Okay, there's our, our um, floral on the upper corner. And then I did two spots down on the bottom left. One of them is just straight up and down. This one here, the very top of the stamp, like that. And then the other one is this portion of the stamp coming in from the side. And that one goes like that. And I had uneven pressure on that, but you get the idea, right? So that's how I would do the inside of that card. And that looks like this when it's put together. And the outside looks like that. So we're gonna show you how to do the sun. And we have also got some sequins on there, but it's a very simple, quick card. So let's, let's demonstrate the sun now on the next card. So the next card is gonna be using different layers of cardstock. So let me put these aside, bring in our trimmer again. And this time we've got a vanilla base. This was our other vanilla that we just used. Let's trim it to four and a quarter. Score it at five and a half inches. Now we're gonna be bringing in blending brushes. Fun, fun tool. So we've got our card base. And we need our layers. And I think this is one where I already had cut the layers. Nope, I did not. <laughs> so let's do three and three quarter inches. And I'll just point out to you the other layers because I won't fully assemble this one either. This is three and three quarters by five, if you recall, three and three quarters by five for both the inside and the outside. So all the layers are the same. That's why I have in parentheses on that PDF, the number two, because you're doing two of, of those. All right, so for this card, the other colors that you would be using would be Berry Burst, love that, such a fun color. And, and these I don't think are cut to size, but I was going to cut them. Crushed Curry, gorgeous combination, right? So we have Very Vanilla, Crushed Curry, and Berry Burst. Let us play around with our layers now. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is the sun. Now, the first thing we did on the other card was the, the stamping, and that's only because that was separate from our layer. But the first thing you want to put down is the sun, because in case your ink from your um, Dainty Delight image isn't quite dry all the way and you start rubbing it, or maybe the cardstock quality isn't the same as Stampin' Up! or whatever, you could smear that black ink outline, because we're going to stamp directly on the vanilla this time. So before we do that, let's do our sun. To do our sun, we need the sun shape. And I'm gonna use the two inch circle punch. I'm gonna use a post-it note, in fact, a few post-it notes, but this post-it note is gonna punch easier if it's already on a scrap of cardstock. Or even like, um, well, I'm gonna just grab, hang on, I'm gonna get a scrap. Even like typing paper or typing, copy paper, that sort of thing, right? If you have something to, to kind of make it a little thicker, it's gonna punch better. So we're just adding it to a piece of scrap paper. We're gonna go into the middle as much as we can, and we're gonna punch. When you punch it separately, it's just too thin. It's too thin and it might get caught up in your punch. All right, let's grab that out of there. Um, this you could save if you want to, but I would punch closer to the edge if you want to use that as a mask. We're creating a mask. We're not going to actually use the inner circle, so I wasn't worried about it. And I wanted as much space around as possible. So we're going to peel that off our scrap. And now we're going to come to the upper corner of our card, creating a little bit of an overlap outside the edge. So you can see there's just a little bit of an overlap there. And now we're gonna protect 
these um, corners here or sections, we're just going to put um, a post-it note there. I'm going to use three more here. We're going to put a post-it note here and we're masking the area. We're covering it up, protecting it like that. Okay, the rest of the card, even if we let our, oops, even if we let our blending brush, which is what we're gonna use next, even if we let that kind of go over the edge of the post-it note, it's not gonna get any ink onto this layer except for this spot. So let's bring in that coordinating. Uh, I, I, I like to use one blending brush per color, but you don't have to do that. You can clean them off in between. I know, it's just me. Few of you do that, don't you? How many of you do that? <laughs> yes, you could use a Cricut to make a um, circle, or you could use dies to make a circle. So if you don't have punches, or you could even trace the bottom of like a, a drinking cup or something to get a circle. Okay, um, so here we go. It's a little bit harder though. We're gonna take and add some color to the bottom. You can see I've already got quite a lot of color on there, and that's okay, because we're gonna start in the middle and we're going to move outward. Normally we want our darkest initial color outside of the card, but we really want the inside of the sun, we're creating a sun, oops, to be really bright and crush curry-ish, okay? So inking it up, testing, lightly going down and going outward. So you can see what we've done already, it's amazing. Now it looks kind of messy in the middle, right? So we just keep going because I definitely want to have that nice and dark. I want the middle of the sun nice and dark. You can focus in on that area, but it's always good to just keep re-inking. And I'm just testing it because I don't want it to be super globby when I put it down. I've got a very inked up uh, stamp pad here. Okay, continuing, I think we'll do it one more time. And it does look smoother off camera. Sometimes the camera makes, um, makes it look more granulated or whatever, but it looks very smooth in person. We're gonna peel this back so you can peek. So you see what we're doing? We're just creating that circle. We're gonna peel these pieces away. Now we're not done with the sun because the sun just doesn't have color, uh, you know, like the glow within itself it has a glow that comes outside of itself. So for the ambiance around it, we're gonna keep going from the middle and work our way out. And I didn't re-ink this time, did you notice that? I didn't re-ink. I just want a little bit of that yellow haze to go beyond the sun. See? Fun, right? <laughs> All right, so next, and we'll get, we're gonna use that, maybe we'll use that again. I might use that again. Let's take and stamp using the positioner. We're gonna stamp that Dainty Delights. And if, you're, if you don't have a positioner, just make sure that you're stamping nice and clear on a good surface. I think that's where I want it. So let's take our magnets, put them down to hold our paper in place. Let's ink up our Dainty Delights stamp. And, sorry, don't have the whole thing on camera. And then we're gonna press it down. And if it's not dark enough, we can always ink it again. And I think I'm going to. So, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? But I think I want to have it just a little bit darker because for the coloring in for this image, we're going to be using a marker, special marker called the Stampin' Write marker. And it's the same type of ink, well, close to the same type of ink as our tuxedo ink. Okay, there. Now we have a nice clear black image here. The next thing that we'll do, and we can remove this from here. Gosh, that looks pretty. This is my favorite of all three cards, although, I, I don't know. I think I, the, sec, the third one I'm, that I'm gonna show is really pretty too. So the next step that you would do is you would pick an end of your 
stamp and write marker. You can choose the brush tip, which comes to a point, or you can use the bullet tip, which is a little more rounded, um, but uh, doesn't move as much. Then you get your reading glasses on. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh yeah, we can really see the detail now. And you're gonna come in with um, non-shaky hands. Rachel's nervous on camera with this because we don't wanna go outside the lines. And you're gonna color in everything black. What the heck, Rachel? Yes, it's really cool because in the end, I'm at that stage in my life, you guys, where my eyes kind of like they relax and then they get stressed and it's weird. It's so weird because um, I had to blink a couple times as I'm doing this just to make them relax again. I might be able to color better without my readers on. <laughs> but you're coloring in everything. You're coloring in the flowers. You're coloring in the leaves. Anything that is not see-through is going to get colored in, okay? So even like um, these tiny little flowers here or leaves at the end here, those are not see-through, right? You're creating a silhouette. This is one of my favorite looks. I love this. You can do this with foliage, with trees, with animals, with um, peop people images, you know, anything, um, signs. Whenever you have like a sun behind something, the light source is behind, and I could keep going, but you guys get the idea. When you have a light source behind, as in this card, you can create that scene where the sun is going down and things are becoming more shadow-like. All right, so after you do that, then you come up with this. Isn't that fun? This is going to convert to this, and this is how um, the other details on this card so I colored in all of those. It took a little bit of time, but um, well worth it. Got, again, sequin accents on here, which I'll show you in a minute. These are the pink ones, which are berry burst, which is why we use the berry burst layer, which I think is still very pretty. On this one, we used the white, which are kind of transparent, so they give that vanilla look to them because you're kind of picking up some of the crumb cake. But all of the sequins come from the same pack. And then I did put on a bit of the um, Wink of Stella, the same exact way I did it with, uh, that I demonstrated for you. These were a little bit bigger splotches of the Wink of Stella because I think I had to squeeze it and then it became like a little puddle. And then I had this big puddle. Anyways, it kind of made a puddle look on this card. This is the first one I did. Um, then, do you see the yellow? There are yellow dots in there. Let me zoom. There are yellow dots on there as well. So the way that I got that is I took a little measuring cup. Oh, this is still kind of got yellow ink in it. A little measuring cup from medicine bottle, whatever. Um, I grabbed a block. I grabbed, here it is, my ink pad crushed curry, opened it up, inked up my spot so I have ink on top, closed this up so I didn't have to buy the reinker. I just used this as a source, okay, a clear block picking up the ink. Then I took and spritzed a little bit of water in here or just a couple drops is all you need, just a little bit of water. And I took a paintbrush. You can use the Aqua Painter. I think I'm going to need a little bit more water. No, maybe not. I got it wet. Picked up some of this. You can even mix it in here. You know, go back and forth. And then you test it, just like we did with the Wink of Stella. So you're going to move everything aside. You're going to take something hard to tap against. Oh, it's already got, see that? It's already got little speckles of yellow on there. Gorgeous, right? So pretty. Let's do that on that one piece. Actually, let's do it on this piece because we'd be doing on it later on anyways, right? Then I can hold it up for you. So just tiny little speckles of yellow. I'm going crazy speckling. Oh, this is just a fun technique, you guys. See the little tiny dots of yellow? So pretty. So that's how you get that. 
On the inside of that card, oh, and I did the ribbon similar, and I'm gonna tell you how I did it. Um, I'm gonna show a different ribbon technique, right? So, oh, and I also wanted to share with you that I did put this layer up on dimensionals on the front. So all three of these are up on dimensionals in case you wanted to know that detail. And then on the inside, I used the same, same images, but this time I colored them in, okay? Thanks, Belinda, you're so sweet. So this is my favorite, but it does take a long time to color in all of that black and you have to be super careful. Like you don't wanna really go outside the lines on the black one. But on this next one, it's coloring in the images and then coloring it in more of a traditional way. So let's set these aside. Um, okay, we're gonna bring back our mask stuff, our mask stuff, our post-it notes. That's the brand I use, sticky notes, so any sticky notes will work. Let's take and move our inky stuff off to the side because we do not want to get that on our projects. Um, putting that over there for now too. Okay, so is this dry? <laughs> dry enough. All right, so those are the ones that, that's how far I got in the first two. I know, not very far, but on this next one, let's see how far we can get. The next one, you're gonna be using white as your base. That is my base of choice. I love, love, love basic white cardstock. So let's grab our trimmer. Again, we're gonna to cut to four and a quarter. And my apologies again for not having all of this pre-cut ahead of time. Score at five and a half. Some of you have been commenting on my hair and asking questions, and I have felt like I have gained back some of my hair doing some of the treatments that I've been doing and using minoxidil and um, finasteride and, oh gosh, some of you have been you know paying attention to my journey, so I thought I would just share this really quick. Um, Oh gosh, I um, have been using Viviscal, although my dermatologist thinks I maybe don't need to, but that includes iron and zinc, biotin. Um, cut this to five inches this way. Got a couple layers here. And then a hormone replacement because I went through menopause, or I'm going through menopause. Okay. So yeah, and I remember I've worn my topper. Um, in fact, I still wear it once in a while when I can't access my my flat iron or curling iron, and I still like to have curly hair. But yes, I feel like it's grown in a bit. So I have um, gone back to wearing my regular hair um, without the topper lately. But then um, uh, my husband and I each got sick. Um, it was COVID, by the way. And um, it was tough. It was tough to get through that. And that's why I lost my voice for eight days. Um, we did the boosters, we did the shots, everything, but um, the doctor thought it was just a kind of different strain coming back from Europe. Anyways, I am now having some shedding again, which happens to a lot of people who had COVID. So I'm just kind of like bearing with it, going, well, if it falls out, it falls out. So you might see me wearing my topper again. Okay, we've got our layers, um, not our colored layers, but we've got our other layers here. Let's do our sun again. Um, we have a slightly different yellow that we're going to be using on this one. Let's put that on here like that so it's slightly going over the edges. You can see. I think it won't affect it, though, very much. We'll put these down, this down, and this one. And we're going to bring in, and I haven't labeled this one yet, but it's Lemon Lolly. I love Lemon Lolly. That is one of the colors of the layers for this card. We're gonna use Lemon Lolly. And because it's so light, I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna test it on the paper. We're just going straight down. Lemon Lolly. This is where we want to use that circle. So I probably have to punch another one. That circle that we had um, thrown off to the side that was a post-it note circle. So let me peel that away. I didn't get this one as intense. It's a daytime sun. It's not one that's really dark yet. So we've got that, and then you can bring in that circle. I think we're just gonna try it out. And you lay this over the top as close to the edge of the 
one that you just did. Oh, see, we need to get a stickier one. So let's punch another post-it. Where did they go? Hang on. Let's just punch from this one. And I've got my scrap here. We're gonna punch closer to the edge this time. Okay, let's grab that post-it note and stick that down. And doesn't matter where the sticky part is, you just wanna be gentle because not everything is being held down real tight on this one, okay? You can see it's kind of gapping there. So you wanna be gentle when you use your blending brush. We're gonna use Pool Party next. Pool Party, beautiful blue, beautiful sky blue, and it works really well with the color Shaded Spruce, believe it or not, because Shaded Spruce is a very coolish green and Pool Party is a very greenish blue, if that makes sense. So you've got that green tint in your, in your, um, in your ink. So we're inking it up, starting on the top in the middle of the circle, and going out and away. And we'll do that again. It's not real bright yet. Actually, I don't want it super bright. I just want it subtle. It comes from the subtles. Ha! Huh. This is one of our subtles colors, just like Lemon Lolly is. But you can see just a glow of blue going around that sun. We peel this away, and now look how pretty that is, right? Gorgeous. Another way of doing this, and this is actually how I did it on the finish card. Forgive me. Forgive me. Let's do that again, Rachel. I think what I did... Try this again. <laughs> we make mistakes sometimes. Let's cover this up. We need, oh, there's my post-it notes. Yay, found them. That's one way of doing it, but that's not the way Rachel did it on the finish card. Hold on, and I think I didn't do it on the finish card this way because, and I'll show you the difference. We'll flip it over. Okay, our sun. I love sunshine, by the way. I'm a, I'm a Leo. Anybody else a Leo? The sun just, uh, it's just, I don't know, it's my, it's my thing. <laughs> I love the sun. Now on the, um, on the other card, I went like this. Yep, I did. I came in from the sides. Because I think what I wanted instead was a white glow around the sun and I wanted the sky to have the blue. So now we have the sky and see how I'm starting off the paper? Starting off the paper and coming in like this and that's giving it more of a soft blue look as I come around and the circle where the sun is I'm leaving. I'm leaving that alone. It's giving it a white glow around the sun, which is more like what the sun is gonna have, right? So that versus that. This almost looks like an eclipse. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Post-it paper, Marcy? Uh, I'm not much of a shopper. Send me a link. <laughs> I'll buy it, I'm sure. Someone just informed me, I think it was Teresa um, Glow, just informed me about post-it tape. What is wrong with Rachel? She just doesn't get out in the world much. My, my world revolves around my, my kiddos and uh, stamping up. So I sometimes don't know what other products there are out there. Even with, I mean like, so yeah, send me a link to post-it paper. <laughs> okay, for this, stand, uh, for this card, we're gonna bring in, where did it go? The positioner again. Oh, I put it back behind me. We're gonna lay it down, line it up. It's gonna go kind of like that. I think it was tilted more. This way and this way. Yep. And then we'll ink it probably a couple times. And I'm gonna show you the more traditional way of coloring. And again, I won't color it all in, but I wanna demonstrate the ribbon trick on this one. So we're pressing it down. And we want it to be just a little bit more like the other ones were. 
and we'll stamp that down again. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, for this card, we're gonna do blend uh, blends markers. So blends markers go really well with Memento ink. Memento ink is um, an alcohol. I'm sorry, Memento ink is a non-alcohol based pad, an ink pad. Um, so it goes super well with alcohol based markers. If you're gonna use regular markers, because we have these in all the colors, this is a uh, water-based marker. So then you'd want to use an alcohol or solvent-based kind of um, outline ink, like Stazon or something. Now I have had success stamping this, letting it dry, and then coloring in, as long as I don't do add too much water coloring to it. You can color in with water-based markers, but once you add water and you try to blend them out more, because these are wetter markers than our Stampin' Right ones, once you kind of add too much wetness, you can, and this can bleed. So that's why I recommend the stays on if you're gonna do stamp and write. So we're gonna use blends markers with our memento like we had been doing and just color in. And I like to use, I like to go light to dark to light. That's my, um, that's my thing. So we color a, a flower, light, and then we come in with the darker because they come in pairs. So we come in with a little bit of dark yellow. And if we need to, and on this one I don't really feel like we have to, then you take and you use your um, light and you kind of blend them together. But you can see that there's already shading in that yellow. The dark is in the middle, the light is on the end. Um, then I used Pool Party, believe it or not, Pool Party markers, um, which coordinate with the ink we used around the edges for all the leaves. And I use Calypso Coral for the pinkish red. It's kind of an orangey, um, orangey pink. Coral is a good color. Love it. Okay, so once I've done that, and I've done my ink spattering, I'm going to do my ribbon again. This time, I'm going to bring in a combo pack of ribbon. Beautiful colors in here. We've got the Lemon Lolly, we've got Azure Afternoon, and we've got the Bubble Bath. So we're going to grab some of this Lemon Lolly. Now on your PDF, you're gonna notice that it says nine to 13 inches. So the nine to 13, here is where that comes in. Um, about five and a half ish. Yeah, five and a half ish here. And then about three and a half here. This is what you do. You take flip it over and you add a little bit of adhesive or you can use like regular tape like scotch tape or whatever and tape it <laughs> my seals being stubborn you can tape it over the um, ends or did I get the sticky on that side okay so here put sticky on each side oh my goodness sakes come on you know our seal if you use it every once in a while, it gets a little stubborn. Okay, we have sticky on both ends. You take and lay it across. I got it on my fingers too. Lay it across your card. Take and wrap and stick it down. Wrap and stick it down. Then you grab your little tiny piece here. So see, it's a ribbon saving technique, you guys. So cool. So you take and then tie on see how I'm doing that I'm just tying on my little tiny piece here and what I like to do is when it gets to this point see how this is kind of pulling it into um, it's kind of curving that ribbon there in the middle I want to curve it the other way so I'm going to come in and pinch it the other way there we go so now it's more rounded like that instead of scooped. And you can adjust this, okay? Because we didn't put any glue on there, you can adjust it. You can move that knot. Sorry, I'm trying to grab it. You can move that knot this way, or you can move it back. You know what I mean? You can put it where you want it to be and then trim the ends. So if you are one that would like to do ribbon saving or you think that this is a lot simpler, because it kind of is, than doing um, 
you know, tying the ribbon and tying it again and trying to put your finger down. And it's a, it's a lot simpler, saves on, on ribbon. So then you would layer this all up. Um, oh, you'd stamp your hello, right? We always do the ribbon and then the hello because you can see through it. Layer it, put the speckles on, and you're going to come up with a card like this. Yay! Isn't this cheerful? It's so bright and cheerful. Um, we've got the Wink of Stella on there. No other extra added color. Oh, it looks like I did do a little bit of... Um, oh, that's because it got it got spattered on when I demonstrated just now. Because I was not adding crushed curry. There's, it's like a darker yellow on there, but it goes. It goes well. Um, the sequins. Let's pull those in. I forgot those. Those are really cool. Um, the sequins... Got all my embellishments in one of these fun containers. Here it is. This is the trio pack. Adhesive back sequins. Um, adhesive back sequins trio. That's the name of it. You got your white, which again is more transparent, and it's also got that multicolor look to it, so it can take on pinks and blues and stuff. You've got your berry burst, which is a very light version of berry burst, and then you've got your um, shaded spruce. So, or is that peacock? It might be peacock, and it goes well with the shaded spruce. That's probably, that's probably correct. So there's that. That's where I used all of those sequins from, colored in all of those leaves in the pool party, and they look like they take more of a green look to them because of the sequins in the layer. Um, did that fun trick with the ribbon. On the inside, you see that. So the same stamps, just now colored in. Everything's colored in. Fun, 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 fun. So I should have shared designer paper today because designer paper is on sale, but I just had to show you this card, you guys. Designer paper, a lot of designer papers are on sale and that sale ends in three, well, you have three days left. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. You have till the end of June to get in on the 15% off um, sale for designer paper. Um, let me bring you to my blog and we are going to go visit. We're going to go visit my blog, okay? Ignore the little black strip across the top because I'm still logged in. But if you come to my website at stampyourartout.com and you click on my blog or you scroll down here and you click on one of the blog posts, let's just click on this one because you guys know this one if you were here with me on my live last week. So we're going to click on that. It's going to bring us to the Missing Middle Daisies card that I shared last week. And if we scroll all the way down, you're going to see... See, I showed off designer paper last week, right? You're going to see all the promotions going on. Um, some of them I put within the blog post, but after my signature, there's my signature, you will find all of the promotions. Okay, we've got a starter kit promotion that ends at the end of June. We've got, here's the designer paper one. Click here for more details. Let's do that. Okay, this will give you all the details of that sale. Oh, because it's within this post. So let's scroll. There it is. So here's the details of the designer paper sale. You can see little snippets of it. It will take you to um, designer papers that are in the online store. There they are. There's the designer paper sale. Oh my goodness. Love them. They're all 15% off in the month of June. Let's go back to the blog post. Let's go back to this one. And let's click here for more details on the starter kit. The starter kit promotion is only going three more days as well. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. They don't do starter kit um, add-ons or extras often, but maybe like two, three times a year. So let's scroll down to that one. Here it is. Here's the details on it. Talks about what you get. You get an extra 30 in free product. Um, normally the kit is you pick $125 worth of product for $99, free shipping. In the U.S. you get a bonus um, uh, paper pumpkin kit. The business supplies, if you're ever going to use them, are free. But yes, most of the demonstrators that sign up are become discount shoppers. They, you know, provide service for their close friends or whatever. You don't have to do this as a business, but you can certainly do it as a business too, like I do. I love it, it's so much fun. So here's the starter kit promotion information. Again, it's the bottom of any um, post. So let's go down to, oh, where were we? Here we were, Cheerful Daisies. Okay, 
Um, this is the one I wanted to point out now because next week I'm going to go live on Thursday instead of Wednesday. Um, I'm sorry if that messes up any of your schedules, but on Thursday, there's going to be a whole new start of stuff going on. And one of them is the online exclusives are going to be refreshed. So if you like the online exclusives that have come in recently in the last three months, then you're going to like this new refresh that's happening on July 6th. So July 6th, Thursday is when my next live is going to be, and I'm going to feature uh, a new set of designer papers um, in a really fun fold type of card. Um, it's, I think it's called the joy fold, but you're going to see how I work those papers in the joy, joy fold card. Um, all right. So that's Thursday, July 6th. We have, uh, we have some prizes. We have prizes, you guys. So let me find them. Let me find them. Let me find them. Last week, I had um, people that um, were picked for the Hello Irresistible Designer Pack Paper. By the way, this is on sale for the next three days. Um, so if your name is drawn uh, or is shown on the screen real quick, because um, I've already got the winners for the After Live comments from YouTube and the After Live comments from Facebook. So we have two more winners plus... Wendy, I hope that you're live with us right now because I have been trying to get back to you. Wendy Lynch um, was a winner last week. She was drawn during the live and I have been trying to email you at that email address. In fact, I've even tried working the email address in different ways and it keeps bouncing back. So I want to reach out to you. You're going to have to message me through Facebook or in a, in a different way or give me an updated email because the email that you sent me was not working. Okay, here is my email, you guys. So if your name is drawn, reach out to me. Okay, we're gonna pick the winners. Let me bring you over to my desk, desktop computer, my laptop. Um, yes, okay. So our YouTube After Live comment winner is Lori Bondison. Lori Bondison gets a pack of this if you reach out to me. Um, and if you live in the U.S., make sure you live in the U.S. If you don't, then I can send you a tutorial through email. And then the Facebook commenter was Rosie Walker. So congratulations to both of you. Um, and then we're going to go back to uh, the desktop because I want to show you the prizes for this week. And then Trish is going to pick a winner. So the prizes for this week. We have choices, you guys. We have and I lost the box, but we have the Wreath of Blooms kit. Oh, I'm so zoomed in. Hang on. Let's zoom out a tad. The Wreath of Blooms kit. I've lost the box for it. Sorry. We have an Amazing Year stamp set. We have Into the Clouds embossing folder. And we have Begin with a Dream. First come, first serve on the prizes. So, uh, Trish is going to call out the winners and I'm going to click over to my computer because even though I can see comments here on my iPad, they don't always show very well there. So let's see if she has drawn winners yet. I don't think so yet. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, what was it that I was going to mention? Um, designer paper starter kit. I think that's it. I think we got it all. So, oh, I know what it was. Um, I had some winners from last week. Um, sorry, I'm still not seeing the winners. Trisha, if you've called them out, call them out again. Um, but last, not last week, but weeks before, I have some winners that haven't claimed their prizes. Uh, we have Barbara Jones and Shirley Nicholson. Um, Barbara Jones was drawn from Facebook, after live comment. Shirley Nicholson was an after live comment on YouTube. Both of you get a choice of um, products plus the sheet of dimensionals. And then um, Jacqueline Varblo, um, you got you won a tutorial. Haven't heard from you yet. You were an after live winner um, drawn from Facebook comments. And I think that's it. So let's scroll again. I'm not seeing winners. Trisha, did you call out when? Oh, there they are. Okay, today's live prize winners are, sorry if I made you repeat it, Claudia H. and Barbara Smith. Congratulations to both of you. I've left my email address on the screen so that you can reach out. Again, 
Barbara Smith and Claudia H. Let's see if I can scroll without tapping on someone's comment. Um, I think, oh, yep, see now they're going fast, so I won't be able to see it. Hang on. Yeah, I was gonna pull, I, yeah, it's not gonna work. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. Um, anyways, all you winners, reach out. My email address is there, I'm gonna pull it off now. Um, yeah, I hope you had fun, I had fun. This is always a blast sharing with you each week. Again, next week it's gonna be on Thursday instead of Wednesday, same time, 11 a.m. Central Time. Um, I'm loving the cards, you guys. You're gonna love them, I, I know you are. So hope you come back and visit. Thank you for the thumbs up, thanks for subscribing, and we'll let you all go. Sorry we went a little bit over the time. Talk to y'all later, see you next week, and now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.